Okay, so let me explain some of the uh, <clears throat> so what I decided is uh, this is a single process multi-thread why don't we call it that um, I, as far as I'm concerned we only want to run one video game at a time it's not important <coughs> It's more important to provide simplicity in one video game at a time than complexity in multiple video games at the same time. Let me, let me restate that. We want to make it simple and run one video game at a time instead of complicated and multiple video games at the same time. Okay? So as a matter of fact, um, why not, I'm going to explain my graphics system. Uh, <clears throat> there's a window manager task which runs 30 times a second and what it does is it regenerates the whole screen from scratch each time. Now other people have uh, back bit bitmaps that they uh, they start getting clever with modifying what has and has not changed but um, you know what? The most critical. I, I don't have a problem at the terminal. At the terminal, there's not a CPU problem. The most critical time is right here. So let's think about this. Um, keeping track of what has and has not changed doesn't do a lick of good for this application. If you have a rectangle that has and has not changed, it is not going to help that application. If I have if I have multiple windows, now what has and has not changed makes sense. But um, that's not the critical point. So I like to call this the SR-71. The SR-71 leaks fuel when it's on the ground, but when it's up in the air, it is super fast and it, it warms up and it runs good. So we leak energy when it's doing simple stuff, but when it comes time to turn on the, the engines, that's when... <laughs> That's when we shine, okay? So we, I call it the SR-71 approach. So uh, what do I mean by single process, multiple thread? Well, there, there, um, there is no, the, um, all there are are tasks. And everybody's on the same memory map. And uh, now threads are on the same memory map. Um, I, you could call it multi-process, multi-thread, but uh, in all honesty, um, it doesn't share the disk well. Like, for example, uh, if we do a big request, that's why I call it single process. Okay, so uh, I don't get involved in breaking... Uh, let's say this guy wanted to read 20 meg and then this guy wanted to read one meg and let's say let's say this guy was at about 15 meg and now this guy wants to jump in and read one meg well what do you do in this situation well Linux is designed for a hundred people using a mainframe and so they they share it now that adds complexity okay obviously so we don't do that we don't do that so I, I'm just, simplicity is our our goal we want to distinguish ourselves from Linux we want to cherry pick the simple beautiful tasks and leave the ugly task to Linux so we, we cherry pick our whole purpose is to make something that's delightful and simple if it's not simpler it has no purpose so for example 
the children, teenagers can can go look at the uh, the scheduler. We just have a round robin scheduler. Um, so if you go to scheduler, what does it do? When you yield, uh, well, you can read it. Uh, yielding is a common thing that we do. Okay, we check if we're in single user mode. If we're in single user mode, if we're in the debugger, you don't want to uh, swap in another another uh, task. Um, the debugger is very confusing. It exists, but it's very confusing. I don't understand my debugger because the current task is hard to remember. Um, it's a low-level debugger, and if you're not familiar with a low-level debugger, you don't you don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, um, anyway, so what do we do when we so single user? Uh, so we save the context and the icing on the cake for the context save is right here. Those okay, whatever. Is that what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Restore, restore RSI. Normally, the uh, the FS segment register is the current task. At this point, RSI is the current task. Um, we're checking if Control Alt Delete, Control Alt X, Control Alt C. Have any of those keys been pressed? There's a flag. You can you can force a uh, control alt delete by setting that flag. So it's kind of a misnomer. I don't know what you want to go. So um, restore task. Now it checks if this task has been marked for death. It checks if this task is awaiting a message or suspended. Um, suspend doesn't really happen as much as you would think. What we normally do at the command line, we are waiting for a message. And then the other thing that you do is you, you say sleep. And if you say sleep, then it's waiting for a wake up jiffy. So it, it goes in a circle. It goes in a circle uh, on each core. It goes in a circle. Um, and when it finds one that's ready, it, it runs it. And up until recently, I had preemption, but um, just recently I got rid of preemption. Um, that's to make it simpler. Like I said, it, if you want to get my interest, tell me how to make it more like DOS and less like Linux. So I, I got rid of preemption. Um, that that simplified. Uh, you see, with this window manager, you have to have a callback to draw the window, and now you have one task. Now you have multitasking. And if you have multitasking in preemption, then you can have uh, your your little teenager changes his link, and then it crashes because it preempted and, and did the window manager. But now it's it's not going to preempt him. So um, as a matter of fact, we noticed uh, when we ran this program, if you notice it, it locks out uh, the window manager. The window it freezes because we don't have preemption. And uh, core zero calls each core gets one eighth of the workload, and core zero uh, locks up for anyway. Um, the window manager doesn't run on schedule, so if you can't really tell, but it, it would be noticeable. So let's take a look when we, uh, let's do a sleep 5000. So now the cores are waiting, they're, they're not done. And uh, let's try that again. I want to see the, uh, the cores. Each core has has a, another task on it. This is the wallpaper has the, the we could do the uh, 
why don't we do that? Let's say 10,000. Okay. So it's waiting. If we do a task rep. Okay, so each core has a, uh, a task running on it. And this has an extra one. So um, you can give a name. These tasks have a name. Seth is Adam and Eve's child. Adam is the father of all tasks. Seth is Adam is the first task created when you when you boot the operating system. Adam Adam is is a special task. He's kind of like um, Adam never dies. Um, as a matter of fact, Adam has a window. All tasks on Core Zero can have one window. So this is Adam's window. You can tell him he's in a server loop. So you can implement server type. Um, basically, you tell him to do stuff. The most important thing about Adam is he has memory. And because he never dies, OK, I just, I just told Adam to print hello. And Adam printed hello. Um, there's something called Adam Include. Now let's say we wanted to make a wallpaper. Um, if we go to the uh, in the Adam directory, there's this file is the current wallpaper, and uh, all you have to do to make wallpaper is uh, set set a callback. So this is all you have to do is set a callback, FP wallpaper. But the trick is, um, what if we what if we had a what if we made a task that that printed something on the screen, and then we ran it, and then when we were done, uh oh. If our task is done and we return it to the system, that's going to cause a serious problem because the wallpaper is going to the, the, the code is no longer um, in memory. So what the solution is, there's something called Atom, in, Atom Include. OK, so this is a wallpaper demo. Here's where it sets the callback. So what you do here is you say Atom Include. Normally, you do a regular include. This time, you do an Atom Include. And look what it did. It told Adam to pound include a file. Now we have wallpaper. This is expensive stuff. <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying it's probably, you wouldn't want to do this because the expense is probably, uh, I don't know, 10% of your CPU. Okay, so Adam, Adam is the first task created, and if you um, if you go to the project file for the kernel, it starts with k start and it ends with k end. Um, so k start is where it starts in real mode. It calls some BIOS and then it patches all the absolute addresses so that it can run. It changes to 64-bit mode. We don't have a compiler for 32 or 16-bit. A lot of people say, why don't you compile for 32-bit? Well, I wrote the compiler, and I can tell you it does not do register allocation for eight registers. It only does 16 register allocations. And so um, it, it <laughs> it's actually a lot harder to make it do 32-bit or 16-bit. God, they had to. They had to be. They had to work really hard to do 16-bit compilers. I had. I had it easy. I had 16 registers, and they were 64 bits each. So, kernel main. This is kind of like the uh, the main routine I always put at the bottom. And so, at K end is the main. What he does. This is the. This is the startup. The where the C code after it changes to 64-bit. So one thing it does is it loads the compiler. Where does it load the compiler? Changes directory, then it loads the compiler, 
and then it starts executing start start OS. So um, the the command line feeds it. The command line feeds into a C compiler. So you include files. So start OS is uh, this is the startup file, and uh, I made it a little bit confusing. Okay, so it includes some headers. This is Adam's symbol table. So this is now all tasks inherit symbols of their parents. If it doesn't find a symbol, it searches the parents. So all the tasks go back to Adam. Um, so these are you never need to do an include because Adam included once and for all. The symbols are waiting at Adam's table for kernel and compiler. Actually, half the operating system is compiled ahead of time. Half is compiled just in time. This right here, there's a big directory. If we do a line line count report, there's a there, the compiler is 18,000, the kernel is 23,000, the atom is 35,000. Okay, so there are two binaries, compiler.bin and kernel.bin. Everything else is in the atom directory and it's it's not there, there aren't object files or executables or DLLs. These are kind of like DLLs, except it's it's just code. It's like you press F5 in the compiler. Um, it just in time compiles all this code. There's a uh, the, the the to support the document structure and the graphics are here. The graphics, the document, uh, some utilities like grep find is is grep we don't have regular expressions by the way um so i could tell you about the kind it's kind of a funky uh find file will let you practice so the way this these files specify the way these uh work you have a the way you have to think about this is you have a directory and then you have a mask and uh, anyway uh, it's kind of embarrassing because it's kind of complicated um, let's say Adam okay So, uh, single process multi-thread. I think that's the fairest way to describe it. It's a very strange concept. It's a very strange concept. But we don't have sharing, so it's really not designed for multi-process. I think that's unfair. But like I say, we want to keep it simple and run one video game at a time instead of break our necks and clusterfuck it and make it run two video games at the same time. Let's go our next and cluster bucket and make it run two video games at the same time. Yeah, no regex. I don't really have anything against them.